Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bad Movie Brothers. I am Eric. I am Chad. And this time we watched K9000. <sighs> As yes, you we probably did. guessed from the title, this is a movie about a cop that ends up teaming up with a robot dog, sort of. Uh, I guess. Not really. Yeah, I mean, he turns out to... First off, right out the gate, number one, biggest problem with this movie. Damn dog doesn't show up until halfway in. Yeah, I was really waiting a long time for this dog. Like, I, I wasn't sure it was ever going to come. They're promising you a talking dog from minute one, and you don't get hide nor hair of this dog until, like, minute 42. I thought they were messing with me. Yeah, I was, like, I, is this a, some sort of a, are they, te is there going to be no dog? But they did give us sweet young Dennis Haysbert, so I'll take it. Does anyone here strike you as strange? At no point, though, does he stop the action to inform us about Allstate. Uh, no. But still pretty good. Correct. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah. tell us what the movie is about. Well, the movie is about a... The movie is basically... The, the, the beginning of the movie is basically Lethal Weapon. Yep. Where a, a mulleted police officer is teamed up with Dennis Haysbert. They're trying to stop, uh, I don't know, things from happening. But Mullet Boy is a loose cannon and screws things up. They end up stumbling on to this plot wherein a scientist lady has made a dog with a computer brain for reasons, and bad guys are trying to steal the dog because they want to turn it into a weapon or something, but then the cop and the dog team up to stop the bad guys. And, I don't know, become, I think they become best friends? Yeah, so the, the cop guy yeah. with the mullet, with the mullet, yeah, yeah. he mentions many times that... He hates machines, and machines hate him. Yes. Yes, he is bad with machines. Machines don't like me, sir. And yet, he constantly attempts to use machines. Well, I mean, it is the modern era. <laughs> but it, he's doing things that he does not have to do with the machine. Like, he goes to try to buy cigarettes. He tries to drive a car and all this. Like, just, you know, go buy cigarettes at a store. Right. Ride a bicycle. Yeah. Well, Like, and... stop it. And to that end, I would argue that he, that it's not that machines hate him. I would argue he's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Because at one point, maybe the, one of the best things in the whole movie is in the initial police action, he destroys a large amount of property to stop some guys that stole like five grand or something like that. $280,000. That's how much they stole? We must have counted wrong. That's not what the perpetrators stole. That's how much you destroyed. And I'm not even counting a full-blown pursuit vehicle. And what's your excuse for all this? Your brakes gave out. The, his, the, and his police chief comes out and he dresses him down. And then, like, the next scene, he has been busted to meter made. Right. Which I was like, oh, they actually, there were actually consequences for him. And they show him trying to get onto his, like, motorcycle, and he can't work it. Right. And I'm just like, well, you're an idiot. This isn't, yeah, well, this isn't that do it doesn't do like it. you. Right. Yeah, you got it. You're just a doofus. Yeah, but, so when they, uh, in this big police chase that you're talking about at yes. the beginning. Which, which was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Especially when they barrel through the the window of the department store. Yeah, that was very uh, Blues Brothers esque. Yeah, 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 yeah. Money was spent on that stunt. However, when they uh, apprehend the individuals, nobody has handcuffs. <laughs> He's got to use a bra off a mannequin. As handcuffs? In, in, a, in a move that I felt like everybody on set was very funny. <laughs> it was rough. Well, and then, and then he gets in an argument with the owner of the boutique, the very sparsely stocked boutique, P.S. Yeah. yeah. Who is 
essentially just Balky from Beverly Hills Cop. You are police! You're not police! You are lunatic crazies! They got a lot of stealing happening in this movie. Well, and, and I can send a small amount of light on this. I noticed at the end of the movie it was executive produced by Stephen E. D'Souza, the writer of movies like Beverly Hills Cop 3, Commando, and Die Hard. A little bit of a money grab, huh? Yeah. <sighs> Stephen D'Souza wanted to put... Well, now, because it's also worth... This is clearly not a movie. Yeah, no. This is a failed television pilot. Rough. Which is part of why, I mean, which from that point of view, I sort of understand why they buried the dog. Like, why they were like, oh, we're going to make people wait for this dog. Because after this, every week, it's going to be wall-to-wall dog action. Right. But man, just give me the dog. <laughs> the dog wasn't even good, dude. He was okay. Was, no, uh-uh. When the dog, nope. you mean to tell me that when the dog arrived in the movie, that it didn't improve the movie for you at least somewhat? Sure, sure, yeah, sure. But it was, it wasn't good. It was no, you, you know, the Tom Hanks movie. That dog, good dog. I, I believe, I believe you're referring to Turner and Hooch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, uh, no. Well, no one is suggesting that uh, the dog's name is Niner. Uh Totally missed that. No one is suggesting that Niner belongs anywhere in the pantheon of great movie or even crime-fighting dogs. But I don't even understand, man. I don't even get it. What does it do? Why Why did they make it? Why do the people want it? Well, I don't they, even get it. According to the I, movie, they made him to help park rangers? What? But like, why, why, man? Like, I don't know. And like, so he can't even like. If you're gonna make a robot dog, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, just make it so it can actually talk. Well, like, you don't need to. You don't need to put a chip into only one person ever for them to talk. Like, that's stupid. Right. Yes, because the way this works, and this is so stupid and convoluted, is the dog has a robot brain that allows him to speak. But they keep and they keep calling it a symbiotic relationship, even though it is not. No. But in any event, so he can only speak with one guy, and through a series of shenanigans, Mullet Boy gets the implant shoved in his ear by a big machine that makes him the one and only person who can communicate with the robot dog, and it's described in some way as like as a microchip transmitter. For a second there, I thought you were talking. <laughs> But uh, your lips aren't moving. <laughs> but they don't have to, Eddie. You're hearing me through a microchip receiver. You're the only one who can hear me. Microchip receiver? And then it turns out that the scientist lady, she, I think, oh no, she wanted to find somebody better. But she was super upset that the dog had been paired Bluetooth style to this schmuck. And yeah, my immediate <clears throat> question was, why did you make it like that? Yeah, and why do people want it so bad? Why is there so many people willing to kill for this stupid dog that doesn't do anything? Right, it's not like he has missiles. No, he doesn't do anything. Well, now he, hold on. He's a phone. He is a phone. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm getting you an outside line. You're amazing. No, just cellular. But not, not like a cool phone, you know, not like... Get smart when he's got the shoe phone. It's uh, just like you talk at the dog, and the dog is like there. That's it. I'm not sure how a shoe phone is better than a dog phone. I would say so, like, they're wanted... equally stupid. So, so like this, like I wanted the dog to have to put like the paw up, and like you have to talk into the other paw. You know, like that's what I wanted. Well, I think that obviously the way it would work is you talk into the dog's mouth, and you put its tail in your ear. Sure, whatever, man. Something. I think obviously that's how it should work. Yeah, where was the speaker on the dog? Yeah, I don't know. Because I was certainly super disappointed just when it turned out that this wasn't a robot dog, that this was some sort of weird genetic experiment dog. Which it, which they show in larval state at one point was very uh, upsetting. Yeah, that was the worst dog birth. 
full dog birth, robot dog birth I've seen. Well, thank God it didn't come out wet. Well, speaking of wet, at one point, the actual cop guy has to jump out the window into a bunch of water. Yeah. And then, like, he goes home and falls asleep for what appears to be several hours. Yeah. When this dude wakes up, his hair is still soaking wet. Yeah. That's a lot of hair, man. It is not that you, much. You and I can't relate. It is not that much. However, however, I know that when my good lady wife takes a shower, if she does not blow dry her hair, it's going to be wet for a while. Hey, you're married? Hey, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You should have you should have met the jerk that was my best man. No recollection. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Never, perhaps, has a talking dog movie disappointed so thoroughly. <sighs> but so, like, I still don't get it. <laughs> well, I don't either. Like, I, I, I have written down as one of my main notes about this movie is I don't know if there is too much plot in this movie or too little plot in this movie. So the so the bad guys. Yeah. So uh, Khan's son from Star Trek Two. They they break into the Light Bright Lab. <laughs> that lab they, was amazing. They. they <laughs> that was, was the most eighties computer lab. It looked like the lab from Turtles Two. The whole the whole situation reminded me of. Do you remember the old Flash TV show? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, where they had where there was the scientist lady that helped the Flash, and she was right. also British. Yeah, so they so the bad guys they break into the Light Bright Lab. Yeah, and they're looking for we don't even know what at the time, and they kill what, some what people. What do you mean we and, don't know what at the time? It's obviously a robot dog. But but did you actually know that from the point of view of that this movie was called K nine thousand? I and, thought it was going to come from somewhere else. I didn't know what they were trying to get. And there was a credit at the beginning of the movie for somebody being the voice of Niner. I was like, yeah. there's going to be a talking dog sooner or later. So they break in. Yeah. And they kill people. And, and the lady scientist is in the worst sweater, first of all. And then she runs away. Why doesn't she just go right to the cops? I don't understand why she's avoiding the cops. I don't understand it. Because she is keeping her robot dog program top secret. Which is weird. Because again, this is not a military project. She intends to be pairing these dogs up with park rangers. Yeah, it, 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 and it's being, by the way, the best part of the movie, it's being protested. The lab's being protested, and this woman brings a sweet little kitten. Where is the voice denying the reports of experiments on live animals, on implants, on, on gene tampering? That was awesome. I think this lady is symbiotically linked to that kitten. Because everywhere she goes, she brings that kitten. And then later on, oh, the lady's time side... out. Time <clears throat> out. We need to take a minute to recognize that the kitten's name is Sigourney. They trust us, these precious little ones like Sigourney here. And that the lady's name is Mrs. Whippington. Where was that lady from? She's been in stuff. She's in a million things. Yeah. Well, anyway, later on in the movie... The lady scientist never runs to the police, but she does go to that lady? What, what was their connection? They said there was some dialogue about it at the beginning of the movie. That Mrs. Whiffington had uh -huh. previously been a supporter and like the big financier of Dr. Asia whatever. Her first name is it's Dr. A Dr. Asia Turner. She had been a supporter of Dr. Asia Turner in her work. But then for some reason, Dr. Turner decided to stop telling people about what she was doing. And so Mrs. Whiffington decided that she had turned into an animal abuser and was protesting the lab that she had herself previously funded. I, I did not understand what was going on. Oh, no. It's like of the, there, are many, there are many misfires and mistakes in this movie. But I think one of the biggest ones was having the whole plot of the movie surround people trying to steal the dog that the movie was about. Like, if this had been a movie wherein the cop and the dog team up to stop, like, some diamond smugglers or whatever, I think it would have been a much better and easier to understand movie. Well, well you know what? Just, just explain to me why they want the dog. 
Well, and it's so confusing because the lead bad guy, who was great. Yeah, he did a good job. He was a great bad guy. He keeps calling the dog like an abomination. Tell that thing to sit or else shoot its legs off. I don't need to compute that. Yeah, why do you want it then? Yeah, if you hate the dog, why isn't your mission to destroy the dog? But he's trying to steal the dog for like terrorists or something because then they'll have dogs that are phones. Right, because again, it doesn't do anything. No, it's not. And it's not even like the six, I think the six million dollar man had a dog. Internet, correct me on this. But I presume that that dog could like run fast and, you know, I don't know, maybe shoot laser beams out of its butt or whatever. Like, like the dog didn't even know what a tennis ball was, man. Like, what are we talking about? The dog didn't know what pacing was. Because they do that thing with this dog like they do with Mr. Data, where the dog has, like, all of these vast memory bank resources of information, but then yeah. he doesn't know what pacing is. Right. Come on. But uh, yeah, uh, he, he doesn't have missiles. He doesn't run super fast. He doesn't fight super hard. Only one person can listen to him. He doesn't, he's not, the only person this dog is of any use to is the cop. Yeah. I don't understand. The, this dog, and I thought about this a lot during this movie. This dog is for our dad. Uh, don't do that. If Because if Dad could have a chip implanted in his head. He basically does, man. They talk already. To the there's, there's communication back and forth. If he could make a phone call on that dog, he would. Oh, well, of course. And he'd be very excited about it. Yeah. And, and just, to, just to really cement matters for you. At the end of the movie, uh -huh. this dog is wearing sunglasses. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know. Mm -hmm. But why do they want the dog? I don't understand. I don't know, man. None of it makes any sense. The dog isn't impressive. I don't understand why they want the dog. The dog is at best a dog Sherlock Holmes. The like, I wanted I wanted the dog and Dennis Haysbert to partner up, not the other guy. That's fair. I would have liked that a lot more. Or, but instead, we gotta put we gotta or, put Dennis Haysbert we gotta put Dennis Haysbert in like all this plastic and tubing once it gets yeah, shot. Because Dennis Haysbert realized where he was and he said, "I need to. I'm doing two days. You can't be for two days." No, no, no. But I'm pitching this to you. Dennis Haysbert and the dog, right? Uh -huh. But somehow the mullet guy's brain gets put into the dog. There you go. That's good. That's a movie. There you go. I'm into it. That's a weekly television program. That's what should have happened. Right? But no, we got this this wonderful film. So why did the doctor lady fall in love with the cop guy? I don't even understand that. That was the least motivated thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't even get that. Because they're running away from the bad guys. They have secured the incubator that the dog is inside of. Right. And the and the cop guy's like, all right, I'm going to take care of these bad guys. And then two things happen that I did not understand at all. Uh -huh. One is the doctor lady leaves without the dog. Right. Why, the most important thing in the world to her. Why does she not take it? Two, she kisses that dude. Right. There has been no romantic anything at any point. Nope. She's just like, yeah, I mean, I guess you're going to die, so come here. Uh, but I don't even understand why they want the dog, man. I don't get it. So let me ask you this. Why do you think they why wanted the dog? I don't even understand. I don't understand either. It was super weird. <laughs> It was super weird and super dumb. But you know what I did love? There's one part of this movie that I loved. Was it when the truck explodes? Yeah. 
Nope. That was pretty great. When the bad guys yeah. start scanning mullet guy with the cool scanner robot that, like, talked, that's what I like. That weird evil robot <laughs> thing? Like, it was, basically, it was that light that your dentist has. Yeah, yeah. But with a, but with a talking with like robot a mouth. face on it. Yeah, it was awesome. That was pretty, and where did they get that? Uh, if they have that, why do they need this dog, man? The dog doesn't do anything. Right, that thing's much worse. <laughs> you, you guys are on the right path. Keep it up. Well, and then the dog... Let's talk about this. We haven't talked about dog vision. Oh, gosh. The dog's version of Robocop or Terminator. Terminator, which... yep. Resilient steroid with a nap pile fabric covering, 6.5 centimeters in diameter, imprinted with the code UUAD. It's a tennis ball biscuit breath, and that's P-E-N-N. -N. You're reading it upside down. Which is hilariously always accompanied by the same doofy musical cue. Mm-hmm. It's like do 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 do. Oh. Yeah, pretty. And who? And then here, and here's a question for you. Please. Who is this for? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Because it's too violent for children. Because this movie did get pretty violent. At a lot of people points. die. A lot of people die. Like there were some good gun battles and car explosions. But it's also way too stupid for an adult. Yep. I mean, I get why it didn't make it to series. <sighs> I'm just confused by it. I don't even. I still don't understand. Here's a couple of other confusing. If we're talking about this movie being confusing, here's another couple of confusing elements of this movie for you. Yep. Numero uno. What's up with Morgan Fairchild? You're the right to remain silent! Hey, that's Morgan Fairchild. Yeah, came with the wallet. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. More than once, we are, we are told about how our hero keeps a picture of Morgan Fairchild in his wallet. Certainly, he's very concerned about his fellow animals. That's Morgan Fairchild. Uh, exactly. I'm her manager. So, was that a joke that it came with the wallet, or did it really come with the wallet? Uh, well, I, I don't feel like he had the limited edition Morgan Fairchild wallet. But I, was it just like, was it ripping off that John Lovitz character from Saturday Night Live? I hope so. I hope there's some reason for it. I get, I, the only reason I can think of is Morgan Fairchild is attractive. And this guy is pretty much a huge perv. Like, does she got to get paid for that? No. I don't think she got okay. paid for that. Okay. But let's not forget that he also at one point refers to Dr. Asia Turner as, quote, the Brit with the bod. You know Dr. Turner, the Brit with the bod? <sighs> Problematic. I would also like to, counselor, oh, I would also like I'm to draw your attention to the scene wherein Cop and Dog have traced, have found Dr. Asia Turner and Mrs. Whiffington, Mrs. Whiffington at a gala ribbon-cutting party. I got something to say about this, but keep going. Where they are being held hostage at the party by the bad guys. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. it, in a situation where I feel like you're out is just to be like, we're in front of a huge crowd. Right. Hey, this dude has a gun. Yeah. Help. So here's the question. Yes. So in that part of the movie. Yes. At one point, mm -hmm. the robot dog mm -hmm. starts tracking the bad guy. Mm -hmm. He has never, ever met or seen or smelled the bad guy. How's he tracking this dude? That's a good question. It's not possible. No, it's not. Wow. 
Okay. I mean, they certainly make a lot of hay out of the dog's nose. That dog's smelling stuff left and right. But like any dog can do that. Yeah. No, you're, you know what? You're absolutely right. Why are we wasting our time with a robot dog that doesn't do anything? Why are we... We wasted... I wasted an hour and a half of my life with this thing. I, you wasted, I don't know, what, 40 minutes? It's an hour. It takes an hour. Okay. Yeah, this one, you know, I came into this episode saying yep. I don't think that one was that bad compared to movies we've seen. <laughs> You're turning me on it. You're this turning me bad. on it. This was bad. I mean, at There's... least it had a talking dog. What I wouldn't have given for a number of the movies we have watched to have had a talking dog. But it's not a talking dog. It's not. We don't know if it's talking. We don't know if this is just in that chip in that dude's brain. We don't know. I suppose that's, he could just be crazy. Right. Yeah. It's not a talking dog. That's fair. Well, it, it was certainly a bad movie. Yeah. Where would you rank this bad movie? It's Bottom 10, at least, for me. You think bottom 10? Well, let's see here. I, I definitely think it was better than Karate Cop. Okay. Which we have at 18. All right. I don't know if it was better than Boris and Natasha, which is right <laughs> there. That had too many jokes in it. That was a good one. Then, then you got Thunderground uh -huh. and the Escape Artist above that. Okay. Are we still going up? No. Okay. You think the escape artist is better than K9000? Yeah. Do you think Boris and Natasha is better than K9000? Yes, I do. All right. Then I think it is going in between Boris and Natasha and Karate Cop. Okay. Because all of the movies beneath it, I think could be improved by a, a talking dog. you got to let this talking dog thing go. I won't let this talking dog thing go. I'll give you a robot dog, maybe. Okay, fine. We're not sure. Fine. Fine. We're, again, we're not sure. What I'm saying is Karate Cop, better with a robot dog. Sure. Black Eagle, better with a robot dog. A Time for Romance, starring oh, Fabio, gosh. better with a robot dog. Oh, my gosh. Better with anything. But yes, this was this was not this was not a great one. I can't believe you didn't sniff this one out. I thought this I I don't blame you if you think I'm barking mad. That was rough. Ah! <laughs> that is going to do it for this episode of Bad Movie Brothers. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back next time with another bad movie. Don't watch this one. <laughs>